Hello everyone, I'm Lee Pacquiao and this is Bloomberg Law on Demand. About three days ago, a judge in a federal uh, district court in Virginia decided that the so-called individual mandate for the Obama administration's health care reform legislation would uh, be deemed unconstitutional. Here to help us understand what this all means, I'm glad to say we have Professor Jillian Metzger from Columbia Law School. Professor, thanks so much for coming in today. Welcome to the program. Pleased to be here. So let's start off with this ruling. Greg Storr wrote a great piece for Bloomberg. Um, it said that uh, the headline read that the uh, the healthcare case is up for grabs. Uh, Supreme Court clash looms. What does this all mean? Is healthcare on the brink? At this point, no. This is a decision by one district court in Virginia. He also uh, severed the provision from the rest of the act. So the, most of the provisions of the act, the healthcare exchanges, Medicaid expansion, all that wouldn't be affected to begin with. He also didn't enjoin the act at all. So we've got another case happening in Florida. This is going up to the appeals courts. Then it's going up to the Supreme Court. Um, this is really just the first step in that process. I want, want to get to the appeals in a minute. Um, but first, opponents of the bill are saying that the individual mandate forces citizens to buy insurance. Could, could you assess the veracity of that argument briefly for us? Well, I mean, I see the, the requirement, honestly, more as a tax. Basically, mm -hmm. if you don't buy insurance, you pay money. You, you, you can not buy insurance. You're just going to pay a penalty on your, on your tax bill. Um, the requirement... Uh, also, I think it's falsely seen as a, as a requirement that you engage in action because the point is everybody's buying health care services. No one's able to go without health care. Right. And this is just a dis, uh, regulation about how you pay for those services. Now, a similar case is uh, about to be argued in federal court in Florida. Um, what's to be expected there in light of this ruling? Well, this ruling, of course, isn't binding down in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, however, the judge in Florida, like the judge in uh, Judge Hudson in Virginia, had shown some skepticism about the bill at the motion to dismiss stage. So I think most people are predicting that we may end up with a similar ruling down in, in Florida, and then that would also be appealed mm -hmm. to the 11th Circuit. Now, the Virginia ruling was quite narrow. Do we expect Florida to be broader? I don't. There's more challenges in the Florida Act. In mm -hmm. particular, there's a challenge to the Medicaid expansion. Um, I think it's very hard under existing case law to find any basis to sustain the challenge. Um, and I think the district mm -hmm. court will definitely uh, block that one. Now, in the event that this ends up going uh, before the Supreme Court, it's going to be quite interesting. This is the first time a lot of justices have seen a Commerce Clause case uh, in front of them. Briefly, how do you expect them to, uh, to line up? I expect that they'll sustain this as constitutional. I mean, mm -hmm. If you put it in the broad arc of their jurisprudence on Congress's powers, um, they've been willing to sustain congressional regulation of economic activity, uh, going back now to the you know, late New Deal. Um, and this is really, in essence, a regulation of economic activity, and I think they're going to sustain it. Professor Jillian Metzger from Columbia Law School. If you'd like to learn more about the issues we just discussed, go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and, of course, on the Bloomberg Terminal. I'm Lee Pacquiao. Thanks for watching.